Hey everybody, Dave Womack here from Bird Tricks, and today we're joined with Daryl Peterson, who is a falconer, uh, I would say master falconer, because uh, we've got to watch him over the past few days and see some incredible things that his birds do. So I've got a list of questions that we've started to put together to basically help us become better parrot owners who have an interest in outdoor free flight to be able to fly our birds more safely and really kind of achieve that mission of saving parrots one person at a time. And that's through us continuing our education with experts that know more about certain areas than we do. So uh, thanks for taking part in this today. Now, my first thing that I want to bring up is oftentimes when people hear the word falconer, they think they think hunter, they think, you know, carnivore, and they just think it's just like, you know, they take this bird to go out and murder Bambi or whatever, right? So what is what is the reality of falconers and how long does it date back? Well, falconry dates back as far as written history. You know, centuries and centuries there's been um, people that have been recorded hunting with and having keeping raptors um, one of the things I would really like to to drive home and, and make you aware of as far as falconers and fa the falconry community is the um, the big sense of uh, conservationism mm. and that most of most falconers are naturalists or scientists there's many biologists that are um, accomplished falconers and and uh, most falconers are very aware of the natural world. They're very educated and aware of the ecosystems which um, the raptors live in and the little niches that each species kind of fits into. And falconers and falconry are the, the greatest advocate that raptors can have. So my understanding from the little research I've done is that most uh, raptors, and if I'm understanding right, raptors is kind of the broad term, like we use parrots, there's cockatoos, macaws, everything, but right. raptors, everything kind of falls under, correct? Correct. So my understanding is in the wild, these birds naturally would only make it about a year, or that first year is very difficult and they may not make it that first year. Is that true? And that's, how that's does correct. A that's been documented with, that? with, with most species. Um, the first year is, the, is when the highest mortality rate occurs mm -hmm. in m almost all species. And raptors and that's the that's the year when uh, most falconers would be able to take possession of a bird whether it's captive bred or from the wild and train it and care for the bird through the year and often at the end of the season those birds are released um, so they're they're in effect um, helping the bird get through the first year where we, probably the biggest um, cause of the mortality in the first year is just starvation Starvation. Yeah, just learning how to hunt efficiently um, and learning how to stay away from other predators and things. So um, falconers tend to take a bird and, and take pretty good care of it. He's not like the white bird okay. where everybody can be there and doesn't mind. He gets cool. a little bit skittish and he might try to carry it over in those trees or over this way. Mm -hmm. So I'll go over and stand for a while and let him start eating. And once he's plucking <clears throat> and comfortable, then we'll have him step up and once I got him under control, then I'll bring him to you guys. Sounds good. We'll wait here. Well, you okay? Can you help? Yeah. You got caught up. Oh, you got him. Well. Let's try to be a little quiet and still while he gets the bird okay.
Now I understand peregrine falcons were on the endangered species list or close to extinction. Uh, maybe speak to that and how falconers played a role in that. Yeah, the peregrine through, um, there, there was an era where DDT was used a lot in the environment with agriculture and different um, um, uses trying to control um, insects and things and kind of worked its way into the food chain and because peregrines are at the top of the food chain in, in their ecosystem, the, those chemicals were kind of concentrated into them and peregrines declined drastically in numbers and were, were listed as endangered and um, were just many historical eyrie nesting sites were abandoned. Um, so the falconers got together with the peregrine fund, donated their birds, the captive breeding programs were initiated and all the young and the, the birds that were produced from the captive breeding program were then hacked through falconry techniques back into the wild. Um, awesome. Many falconers donated their birds and their time, um, you know, their whole life to the cause and was able to really bump the population back up and they were delisted um, in 96. That is amazing. In fact, I remember growing up in Spokane, Washington, there's a bunch of paintings or murals, or at least there was, uh, that attributed to kind of the reintroduction of peregrines in that area. And it sounds mm -hmm. like um, you and probably your friends have played a big part in that. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, and that's an ongoing thing. You know, the work, the Peregrine Fund works with different species that are in trouble throughout the world. That's you know, awesome. They're working on the, the condor project and, uh, you know, some of the tropical species that are, are declining and whatnot, aplomato falcons, and uh, a lot of those guys are falconers, and the birds that are used come from the falconry community for the genetics and stuff. Interesting. Okay. So one of the, one of the misconceptions that we hear is that people who view falconry from the outside without a lot of uh, research into it will often think that it's 100% based on food and that that bird won't come back unless you're using food. Can you maybe shed some light on that if there's any truth or how, what you have to do to make sure that it isn't just based on food? Okay, um, <clears throat> so I would probably tell it to you like this, um, that using food to train a bird is, is just one tool in your bag. We have many tools and many different things that we use with our relationship with the falcons. Um, food is one of those. So we don't rely just on that um, because a lot of it is how you relate to the bird, how the bird um, sees you, what the bird tolerates um, in respect to your mannerisms with handling the bird, you know, making sure you don't offend the bird, um, hmm. things like that. But and learning how to read body language really, really good with the falcons so that so that you're aware of their thoughts and their feelings. Um, and, and that kind of um, brings up their, um, it kind of heightens the relationship to more than just a food-based relationship. Because if, if you rely solely on just, you know, I have to be hungry in, in order to do anything, um, it's not a very meaningful partnership. Yeah, and and actually it'll, it will suffer in performance. Um, so there's there's a lot more to it than just just whether the bird wants to eat or not. Okay, he can't see you, so he's not going to reach out. Yep, by that, dude. but he's not going to jump. Nice. You ready, dude? Nice. And I've got that. My camera, my phone's on for photos. If you want me to take some, I would you. love it. We're gonna. Just slowly walk this way, watch where you're stepping, so you don't trip. Is this one yours, Dave? Yeah, it's all on and ready to go. It's super nice. Cool. Yeah. It's gonna be right here. <laughs> and then... I know. She was such a There? He's nice and calm, isn't he? It's okay, buddy. It's okay. 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 It
here. I'm going to let him back out here. He does want to get one. Just the two of us? Yeah, I'd say you guys could get and the more I, I'm learning about falconry, the more I'm realizing how much of a crossover there is between the parrot world and the falconry world. the operant conditioning, there's a training quadrant, there's so many different ways to build that relationship with the bird. And I love the way you said it, you said it's a partnership. Would you say that they show affection or what does that relationship look like, I guess? Well, I'd say that varies from individual to individual and species to species, probably like you've seen with your parrots. Mm -hmm. So there are some individuals who are prone to be very affectionate, who can really get, grow to love their falconer and um, and sometimes the dog that's that's with them that's <laughs> part of the team yeah and you can have this neat little um, partnership between the falconer and the dog and the falcon and it's really neat to see because they're it's all built out of mutual respect and working together and and reading each other's body language and not offending each other and things like that to, and and so there is some affection that way um, Probably not in the terms that people are, are used to, like having a dog come up and wanting to have its ear scratched. There's not a lot of that. But there are some endearing moments with a falcon when you'll get a certain look yeah, or a certain posture that says, hey, you know, you're all right. I like you. You're, <laughs> you're, my, you're my guy. And, yeah. and you'll see that, and, and the more that you observe wild hawks and falcons and things like that, um, and you see them interact with each other, like a, a pair, you know, interacting with its mate, um, and you realize, hey, that bird of mine likes me because it's doing some of the same vocalizations or the same postures, and and, and conversely, 
you know, aggression and things that are like, hey, stay away from me. Yeah. Um, so a big part of it, and I'm sure a big part of your success with, with parrots has been learning how to read body language. It's a huge part. Um, yeah. We, as you saw earlier today, I, we didn't get this on video, but I said, oh, here's how obvious it is with a bird. And so Jinx was on Jamie and I said, watch. And I put my hand in and he wanted nothing to do with it. It was very obvious body language. And then I'm like, but will you do it for a treat? He's like, yeah, I'll do it for a treat and came right up. And so it's, that was as dramatic as I could show it, but there's a lot more subtlety to it as I've seen through the last couple of days with you, where it is those itty bitty subtleties that, that show that relationship. And in the parrot world, it's about reading what that is as well. And then understanding what to do with that information. Because when you talk about affection and this partnership, as humans, we tend to put our emotions on the animals and say like, oh, he loves this or, you know, hates that. And that can be true in one moment and it could be 100% opposite in the next moment. And so our job as trainers and coaches is to really help people learn to see what it sounds like you're also explaining. So yep. how the bird interprets what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and, and then reading that body language and, and like you say, knowing where to go with it. Sometimes it's knowing when to say, OK, I need to back off. Um, or I need to do something the bird's telling me hey let's do this and missing those subtle cues um, um, and missing that that body language and not really learning to communicate like that with your with your falcon then you're relying back to your tool bag of just hunger right you know then you got to have the bird hungrier because because you're clumsy and because you're being offensive to the bird you have to override these bad behaviors and thing in order to get the end result you want where whereas if you you learn those cues and you have a, a little more meaningful relationship with the falcon then it you're not relying on just that it's kind of a bigger bigger picture does that make sense totally and you mentioned relationship and partnership quite a bit would you consider <clears throat> your falcons to be part of the family absolutely yeah 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 you get you get pretty close to them and, and they're they're a part of your life I mean you know you're with them every day you're interacting with them to some capacity yeah and you know you spend most of your free time thinking about them yeah you know we're, we're, we're pretty obsessed most falconers and like most bird guys are probably but, yeah there's so they're, they're very eccentric very extreme. central <laughs> part to, very central part of the family yeah and the, and your whole life so yeah they're you know if somebody said hey i'd like you know to come and get one of your birds or something that's kind of like well, i don't know it's like saying you know i want one of the kids or right. my old dog or pick, something. pick the favorite yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of family, something that really um, I found endearing was the relationship that the birds have brought together for you and your daughter and getting to watch that, that comparison where not only do you get to, to hunt with her and, and your birds, but also the, timed, the time trials. So for people that are watching that are like, well, I don't want to get into falconry because I don't want to hunt. You, you opened my eyes to a whole different world last night where you also got to involve your, your family into it as well. Can you kind of share what those two different sides of falconry are? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, taking the taking the falcons out with with the kids, um, with the family has been what we've done a lot of, and we've made a point to do it to involve the the family because there's so much to be learned about life, about each other, about relationships. You know, mm -hmm. it just helps you you become a better person by being out, being interacting with nature. You know, and uh, you can go out and exercise the bird to the plane or drone or, or calling it back and forth and, and work on the bird's fitness and conditioning um, without necessarily going out hunting all the time yeah and there's a lot of just fun in doing it you know fun in going out and seeing how fast the birds will go and and things like that and it's it's fun because the kids are right there and involved you're not walking across some frozen field you know that's not right. it's not fun for kids to do that sometimes right i mean to some extent maybe but um and so one of the things that i always tried to do with with my kids was make it fun for them and think from their point of view and making it positive for them and then visiting our friends over in the gulf um also really helped me appreciate that and see how aware they are and um 
how involved they are with their, the family aspect and the culture and the heritage of it. And spending time over in the Middle East and seeing our friends, you know, we went out into the desert and they like to bring their kids, yeah. their sons. They get to pick a bird up and handle it and turn the falcon loose and be involved, you know, be involved with, with not just with flying the bird, but with the discussion, you know, they're sitting right there with the discussion about the birds and this was my falcon and it was faster than yours and, and because that's the way their fathers taught them and it's been done for generations and so it becomes a little more of a cultural thing instead of just, you know, some individual's hobby that he's going off doing this this thing and taking time away from the family. Yeah. Um, that's maybe a little more than what you wanted me to say on that topic. No, in fact, I got chills when you said it because that you, to kind of bookend, you started with saying that this has been around longer than, than the written language, which mm -hmm. tells me that it's probably been around as long as somebody's ever written any biblical uh, whatever religion that somebody wants to believe in. There's seems to be evidence that this has been around even before that mm -hmm. and then to top it this one idea of bringing the family together around a birds is joining cultures that don't always get along with each other mm -hmm. to celebrate the family and i think that that's a really cool thing for for people to realize about falconry falconry is that it it is more than just flying a bird to catch something it's it's a whole experience and it's you know somebody brought up the other day you know how do you how do you do schooling for your daughter? And it's like, hey, she's out of school for a month for this trip that we're doing. And she climbed these rocks behind us. She got to hold uh, a jeer falcon. She got to, you know, learn about that. There's been so many amazing aspects of it that chime right into what you're saying about, you know, how not only is a bird part of the family, but it gives an opportunity for the family to come closer, as well as mixed cultures that otherwise may not get along we might have totally different beliefs but we all get to come together over this one yeah this one idea of of letting birds be birds and being part of nature with them i think that's pretty cool yeah it's been really neat I, that's that's one of the greatest things that's that i think falconry's done just for the world is is the the un, un, unity that it's it's contributed to and the kind of a brotherhood of you know different cultures and different countries it's been interesting to to travel to different meets you know they have an international meet um, they have the Sheikh Zayed festival over in the Middle East and different countries come and and it doesn't matter if they're from Mongolia and they can don't even talk English they smile and it's you want to they want to talk about the birds yeah you know you probably see a similar thing with parrot people you know that are they want to they want to learn and talk about different ideas and things like that and yeah it's, and it's a uh, I don't know, it's a positive thing that's come from that. Thank you for joining us here. And uh, definitely go check out his Instagram because what you're hearing from us right now is just the tip of the iceberg. Our minds have been absolutely blown the last couple of days. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave your comments below of what questions you still have. And we'll do our best to try to get those answered for you. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And most importantly, share this with somebody who you think might benefit from being able to check this out. <laughs>